So my shirt says, happiness is a journey, and so is building healthy habits, especially if you have ADHD like me and really struggle with this topic. So today we're gonna to be walking through how to start to build some healthy habits with ADHD, how to use Notion to track it if that is what you end up using, as well as sharing some other tips. And I'm gonna be sharing my top 10 hacks for building habits that I have found helpful that maybe you will as well. Make sure to follow along for more ADHD, Notion, productivity and marketing tips. So over the last couple of years, habit tracking has become really popular, just building habits, the book Atomic Habits kind of blew it all up and now everyone's talking about it a lot. And I think there's some important things, I have read that book and there's some important things that I took away from it that still stick with me, uh, but also some other things I've learned over time and I kind of want to talk about them. So I'm gonna be sharing 10 habit hacks that I think are helpful that I've learned from books, from just personal experience. So the first one is realizing that you are not perfect and you're probably not gonna get it right. This is something that I've had to realize about myself is that I can try to do habits, but it's never gonna be perfect. And the more that you try to be perfect and don't become perfect, the more you feel shame. So you definitely don't want to do that. So I think every day I put in at least effort and whether or not it works, I just have to deal with it. I don't always get it right and I'm not always perfect, but I'm trying. Number two, create systems that work for you. I see so many things being like, you have to track habits this way, you have to do it that way. If it doesn't work for you, it's not gonna work for you. So buying a template of something where it's like, this is how you track habits, that might not work for you. Find what works for you, test different things. Maybe it's laminating something and checking things off. Maybe it's putting it on a wall. Maybe it's using Notion, whatever it is. Maybe it's an app on your phone that's a complete, just separate thing. Maybe maybe it's something that you set up for yourself. Maybe however you want, you're gonna struggle to find it for a while, but once you do, try to stick with what you've done because the longer you stick with something, this is what I say about Notion, the longer you stick with Notion, the more it becomes easy to use. If you give up right away, it's not gonna help you at all. Okay, number three, put it on a calendar. Um, I don't know about you, but I use Google Calendar for everything, and I also connect it with my Amazon Alexa, so my Amazon Alexa will tell me out loud um, if something is happening, um, so it kind of reminds me every day, because I don't know about you, but I forget to take out the trash on Monday nights, and so my Alexa tells me at 6.30, hey, it's time to take out the trash, and that's a habit that I have to do. It's a task that I have to do every week, otherwise my trash will stay in my garage, smelling up my garage. Garage. So sometimes you need that reminder because our brains don't always work the best and remember everything. All right, this is a concept that James Clear uh, had in his book in, uh, Atomic Habits and it's don't miss twice. And I, I think about that one a lot is if you miss a day, try to get back on board uh, because the longer that you're off, the harder it is to come back from um, streaks or, or just trying to do something every day. Now, there are things like I was meditating for like, five months every day. And recently I've just kind of stopped and I'm like, shoot, I gotta get back to that. It's just funny cause it's like, I miss one day and then all of a sudden I'm not doing it every day. So, you know, sometimes it's hard, it's easy to just stop doing a habit, but if it's easy to pick it up once you've done it a few times and you just have to, you know, just get back to it. All right, number five, gamify it if you can. So make it a game, make it, you know, increase your dopamine by by making um, it a challenge or something that's gonna get you excited about doing the habit. Maybe you are you know, competing against somebody else or something and whoever gets the most wins and that is what charges you and gets you excited about it. This is a big one for me. Punishment works better than rewards. I am so much more motivated by punishment than I am by a reward. So basic reward systems don't work for me. If it's like, hey, you do this, you get something, I'm like, cool. If, some, if something bad happens to me, if I don't, I get my button gear and I do it. So that is for me um, a motivator. Put things into the world and that will help you follow through. I'm the kind of person who I have to say it out loud to my audience in order for me to follow up with it. So whatever it is, for example, my habit of making YouTube videos every week, which is something I have to kind of do on a weekly basis, is because I have announced to my YouTube channel, hey, I'm putting out a video this week. So for me, it's like, I, I would feel like I'm disappointing people if I don't, so it really forces me to actually do it. Okay, the next one is tracking it in some way. The thing for me that I've found is sometimes it's, 
I don't always have to write it down that I've done it, but knowing what I have to do is really the most important thing. Putting it in my head, I think for me it's like every day, like one of my things that it's like I have to hit minimum 5,000 steps a day and my goal is to hit 10,000. I would say I fall usually between the eight to 10,000 range. And that's by, because like my head, I'm like, that is the like number one thing I have to get done today is hit 10,000 steps because I want to be active. That is a high priority for me. So my goal for that is, you know, I, I, I know what I need to do every day. If you're trying to add some new habits or some new healthy things to your life, maybe it's gua shawing every day, or maybe it's standing outside in the grass for 10 minutes. Those are a couple of mine. Some of them times it's just putting it on a calendar, being like, hey, go stand outside for 10 minutes on the grass and kind of ground yourself. There's a lot of different things you can do, whether it's meditation, journaling, all the healthy habits that we should be doing, it adds up a lot is what I've realized. And sometimes you can't do it all every day, but if you can try um, to get at least something, you know, um, just knowing what you need to be doing is just an important step. So consistency is something that I really think about a lot. And when it comes to like the compound effect, so these are kind of, um, eight and nine. I've read the book, The Compound Effect. I recently read the book, The Slight Edge. Both are great books about just the little things adding up over time. When I was losing weight, it took me several months, but that was, you know, minor, minor things every day. By weighing myself every day, I was seeing the, the changes. I was tracking everything. And that really actually pushed and motivated me more than anything that ever had in, ever before. I talk about that in my video about my weight loss journey and it's been very, very beneficial. And you know, it's so funny, I have recently got off the train of weighing myself and I've started gaining weight again. And so my goal is to get back on that, that train for the rest of the year. The last one and, and kind of going along with that is present bias. This is a psychological phenomenon where um, it's all about instant gratification. When you really have to think about long-term, sometimes it's like, oh, I don't wanna work out today because I'm tired. But then, you know, if you do that every single day for six months, that's not gonna help you. So sometimes it's the little things that you do every day that over time they will compound and help you grow. So these are just a few tips that I have for habit tracking and specifically for building better habits and trying to be healthier because one of the things that I did um, in 2021 was I quit eating cereal every day and I switched to a different breakfast and now that is not even a habit that's just what I have in my kitchen and that's what I eat every day and that has become a consistency thing for me. The other thing recently I started doing is I'm now eating salads for lunch every single single day. My, my, I start with the salad. Sometimes I'll have something else, but like that has become a healthy habit of mine. Um, I never liked salads until this year ever. I never liked them. And then I found a recipe that I really liked. And so now I'm like, okay, I had, I know what I have for breakfast every single day. I know what I have for lunch every single day. The rest of the time I can vary it up, but I'm like, I know exactly <laughs> what goes in the salad. I have all the ingredients every day for me, like buying food and stuff is like such a struggle, but having consistent things for me that I don't have to think about and be like, oh, I gotta buy all these ingredients. Like, no, I have everything in my fridge and when I run out, I, I just replenish it. So I think that's an important step as well. So when it comes to tracking your habits, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Um, I wanna talk specifically today about Notion and I do have a habit tracker within my ADHD life tracker template that I've set up. What's cool about it is you can change out what you want to track. I just have some examples in there. And then when you do is when you uh, turn the status, it actually goes through and checks off all of the things that you've done. So I just wanted to walk through that today um, if you're interested in seeing um, the setup that I have in my life tracker and how that can work for you. And it does auto repopulate every single day, which is super cool. So you don't have to like reset it every time. All right, so this is within the ADHD life tracker template. So if you scroll down a little bit, you'll find something that says daily routine. Click on that, and this is the daily life tracker. You'll see here it's already filtered to today's date, and I have it through the rest of the year. So it's literally filtered to specifically today. So tomorrow when you open it up, it will be filtered for tomorrow. You're gonna open it up, and then right here we have a bunch of different options. So let's go through each of them. So one thing I've linked to is your to-do list. So if you have something to do today, you can link it over. So then when you actually go to that, you'll also see it's linked over here. So let's go to, so now you'll see it's related to the daily life tracker here. It shows the date. And then if you go actually into the entire to-do list, and if we do this, you'll see over here, it's actually linked over here. So it's automatically linked that way. Let's go all the way back. Okay. So, so everything that I've set up, for example, check mail, let's do done. What happens now is it actually adds the progress bar. So every time you update something, 
uh, let's do dry brush, it should update this, uh, which is really cool. So it'll just slowly over time show that it's working on the progress. Now, what's cool is these are just things I've added. If you wanted to, you can rename them and they can be things that you want. All you have to do is then go into the formula, click edit property. Um, let's see, you have to go here and then you just change out the name of it. It has to be the exact same name as the new property that you have renamed, but it should then still add everything up. So that should work with all of them. Um, some other things, journal entries, links over to that specific journal page. Um, meals, you can you know choose which meals you're doing that day. If you're a woman and you have a menstrual cycle, um, you can see which phase you're in as well, which is kind of helpful. Um, I've got things like outfits. So you again, you can track your outfits every day, how many steps you're taking, the vitamins that you're taking, which is actually part of the groceries and supplements, and then if you track your weight. So those are the, all the things that I've set up for your daily habit tracker. Um, also, I missed this one, goals. So if you are, have a goal for the day, um, but that to me is... Uh, an easy way to just have an everyday habit tracker within Notion. This is all set up for you already um, within my uh, ABC Life Tracker template, as well as within my entire Notion Foundations All Access, which you get this template as well, as well as a ton of courses and walkthroughs of how to use Notion. So this is something that I highly recommend. Um, this is just the way that I've set it up for myself. And I think it's really cool to kind of track your, your daily routine to see if this is something that you wanna do. There are lots of other options as well. This is just what I found with Notion. This is the best way I found to do it where it actually auto-populates every day. Um, if you wanted to, you could change it so that it's a checklist where you have to check things off. That's another option. Um, there's also different apps. I wanna share a couple of them down below um, in the description of this video that are great habit trackers. Sometimes people like more visual trackers. There's a lot of different options for you. Um, you know, habit tracking is different than to-do lists because it's an everyday thing. A lot of the times it's the same thing every day. So for you, maybe you have set times that you do things at, or maybe it's just something that you have at certain times a day. There's a million ways that you can do it, but it is something that you can set up for yourself however you wanna do it. So anyways, I hope that this was helpful to walk through how I set up habit tracking inside of Notion. Um, this is again, if you go back to the Daily Life Tracker Habit Tracker, um, I have all of the dates for the rest of the year. So you can literally see I have the date set up. You can see here, outfits, you can track your meals. You can see it all this way as well, which is nice. So instead of seeing it this way, maybe you wanted to track it this way. Again, you can go by date, you can quickly cha you know, change all of this if you wanna track your mood, um, if you wanna track your steps, your weight, however you wanna do it. Um, you can also view it in calendar mode. So each day um, you can see it's all set up this way. This should be today. So you can see how it's all set up. Um, and I think it's cool. I think it took me a long time to set this up. So <laughs> um, adding all those individual dates took a couple of hours. So I hope that you guys make sure to check this out and um, you can see again, it's very simple. All you have to do is just change the progress um, and then it automatically changes it here. It changes it um, here as well. So you'll see if you go into, let's see, August, you can see, you can add more properties as well. These are just the ones showing. So if you wanted to show that, you know, you can see that it's now done. You can, you can show whatever you want um, in this view, which is helpful as well. So anyways, hope that this is a quick walkthrough for you on how to track your habits in Notion. Um, make sure to subscribe for our next series, which is um, on business and Notion. I'm super excited to do five different videos about business and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.